Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today, I want to talk about one of the key things uh, in Polymathics, which is networking, right? It's so important to meet new people. And it's just like the old saying goes, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And this is held true in so many of my life experiences. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have some expertise. You definitely should have that. But you cannot rely upon your expertise to get you to the places that you need to go. Only people are going to, to be able to do that for you, right? Whether it's the hiring manager or the CEO or some company, a prospective client, you have to get to know them and understand them, right? But one of the most intimidating aspects of networking is actually meeting people. Going up to complete strangers who you don't know and letting yourself, like, opening up, right? What if they don't like you? All these things coming through your mind. What if they, what if they think I'm a fraud? What if, what if they think this is ridiculous? What if, you know, what if they're really successful and way about, out of my league? There's so many questions that go through our mind that kind of intimidate us. And, um, and so today, um, that's the, the topic that I want to talk about. And so uh, what I've done here is I've got a quote here from Carl Jung. I think it's very appropriate for the conversation. Carl Jung once said that the meeting of two personalities is like the contact of contact of two chemical substances. If there's any reaction, both of them are transformed. And isn't that so true? It's so beautiful. It's almost poetic, but he's right. If there's any kind of reaction, both parties change normally for the better. But the thing is, how can you go about your life and meet new people and and get them to instantly like you? I mean, if if someone were selling the key for that, then they would be a millionaire. Well, let me give you an example, a really nerdy example of what I believe to be a great universal greeting. And then we'll talk serious talk. But uh, I don't know how many of you guys are kids from the 1980s, but I am. And so many great things uh, were happening then. You had like Return of the Jedi and G.I. Joe and one of the greatest franchises ever, Transformers. Generation One, baby. The original gangsters. <laughs> but um, I remember Transformers the movie. I think it came out in 1984. Oh my God. It was one of the greatest movies of all time. And of my childhood, for sure. Um, and, I mean, who would have thought that they would kill off one of the greatest characters of all time? Spoiler, by the way, 20 years in the making, Optimus Prime dies in that movie. Although he seems to die in a lot of the movies. But um, <clears throat> the thing about the movie is there's a, there's a certain part where... And, and this is kind of relevant, too, because the new Transformers movie is going to have the Dinobots. And in the old Transformers movie... They had the Dinobots. They had Grimlock and Sludge and Slag and um, and Snarl. But um, the thing is, at one point, there being the Autobots who survived the 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 Decepticon attack are escaping from. And they're running away from this new threat called Galvatron, who they they're unaware is actually just Megatron, who's been re rechanged, reshaped by Unicron. But anyway, anyway, so they're being chased. Dun, dun, dun. And um and at one point they have to pretend like their ship is blown or actually their ship, the ship that Hot Rod and the Dinobots and Cup they're on, it gets shot down and they crash into this planet of the Sharktacons. And when they crash, Cup and Hot Rod fall on one end of the planet and the Dinobots fall on the other end. And um, and just to set the stage, like so, Cup and Hot Rod, they <coughs> they uh, they meet up with these Sharktacons. They're these 
transformers that look like piranhas. And at first, Cup says, don't worry. Hey, I got this. And Cup's like this older, kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi mentor-like uh, transformer. And so he pulls out like a little uh, Energon cube. And he gives it to the Sharktacon. And he says, Ba weep, Gra na weep, Nini bomb. And he tells, he tells them and he tells Hot Rod that's the universal greeting for hello. Everybody knows this. And so the Sharktacons, they, like, they, they all take the Energon cubes and they start eating them like they're candy. And they're all saying, Ba weep, Gra na weep, Nini bomb. And everybody's getting into it. But then when the Energon cubes are gone, all of a sudden, the Sharktacons get really upset, and they take Cup and Hot Rod captive, and they bring them to their masters uh, and throw them in jail, the Squidicons. And, and so, um, so what happens is <coughs> uh, Cup and Hot Rod, they're held uh, in contempt of court, and um, it's a really twisted kind of court, and the, the Squidicon, they're, they're like, guilty or innocent. And the, uh, the Squidicon is like, innocent. But even though he says innocent, they still drop them in this pit where all these Sharktacons are there, and they, like, you know, eat them. Or they try to. But uh, what happens is, right about that time, Grimlock and the Dinobots come barging in like a bunch of bosses, and they just kick the freaking shit out of the Sharktacons and the Squidicons. And so you guys are probably like, all right, Josh, is this about Transformers or is this about universal greeting? I'm getting there. Now, there's one final part to this story. Grimlock and Hot Rod and Cup and the Dinobots, they fly to meet up with their other friends who were under attack but crashed on a different planet, uh, the of uh, junk the con the the planet of junk uh, where where the, the the people who live there are the junk cons and the junk cons feel as though their territory has been breached by um by the other Autobots that are there and so um <coughs> what happens is they're like in the middle of this fight when all of a sudden uh you know, Cop and Hot Rod and the Dinobots, they land on the planet in this big ship and they come out and everybody stops fighting. And then Hot Rod goes up to the leader of the Junkticons and he hands him an Energon Cube, which I don't know where that came from, but he hands him another Energon Cube and he says, Ba weep, gra na weep, nini bong. And the Junkticons love it. They love it so much, in fact, that everybody starts dancing. They get in a circle. Apparently, they've practiced the dance a hundred times. And they they live happily ever after. That one thing caused the Junkticons to join the Autobots in their fight against Unicron. But anyways, so there. I got all of, there it is. I got all of my nerdiness out. Now I can come back and be a real person. Why am I telling you this story? Because... I believe there is a universal greeting. I believe that if you simply go up to people and you say, hey, what's going on? My name is so-and-so. This is what I do. And when you tell them what you do, you tell them not what you do like I'm a writer or I'm a, an analyst. That's boring. You tell them how you help people, how you can help them. I help veterans get the jobs that they want. I help people find the stories that that truly get them where they need to be. That is wildly different. And then let me tell you, so that's part of that's part of the universal greeting, is going up there and initiating contact. But think about it. If you're at some event or or just hanging out with new people and someone was cool enough to come up to you and pick you out of a crowd and say, hey, you look important enough that I'd like to talk to you. Think about how special that makes you feel. Now where a lot of people mess up is after they introduce themselves, they start pontificating and blithering on in self-indulgence about themselves. That's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is then ask them, hey, what do you do? What, are, what you know, where are you coming from? What are your, what, you know, what is your passion? What are your goals? Start to calibrate to them, right? The best way to inspire someone 
is not to tell them about you, but to tell to, to ask about them. Find out what their goals and their dreams are. Find out what, what really turns them on. And as you calibrate, then you start to understand where you guys have a connection. And that connection, my friends, is the universal greeting. So, um, now with that being said, there are going to be, in times, there's going to be shark decons. There are going to be those people who are uneducated, ignorant, or ungrateful for what you have, what, whatever value you bring to them. And that's fine. Because for as many shark decons as there are, there are also people like the junk decons that well outweigh in numbers the shark decons. People who will be um, willing, able, and ready to join your cause if you can show them the value that you add. If you can uh, inspire them enough to join a cause that they believe in. So, with that being said, I know I've said a lot here. Um, think about the next time you're going to go out to some new venue and you're going to meet new people. What are the things that you could say to introduce yourself? To give kind of an interesting introduction. No more than three lines. If you're doing more than that, then you're, then you're pontificating. And then think about some interesting questions that you could ask the other person to find out about them. But you have to, you have to really listen. Really, truly listen. Don't hear them. Listen to what they're saying and try to see where that connection is. Because when you make that connection, then you're making more than just a, a, a contact. You're making a friend, possibly a friend for life. But you have to be invested in it. If you're not willing to invest in them, why should they be in willing to invest in you? So, on that note, I'm going to leave. But until next time, take it easy, guys.